All right, so sales figures are in for Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze in Japan. But before I get to those sales figures, I want to point out that the how well Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze has been selling in combination with how well all the Wii U ports have been selling is really the ultimate conversation point when we talk about why Nintendo is porting so many Wii U games and why they're going to continue to do so. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule, but in general so far, every single Wii U port has been a success. Now, first let's talk about Dungeon and Tropical Freeze since that is the most recent Wii U port. Now, we know they added Funky Mode with Funky Kong, but essentially it's the exact same game we got on Wii U minus Funky Kong, which I know makes the game easier, and some people say that's not the best way to play, but whatever. It sold 88,000 units in its opening week in Japan. Now, that might not sound super impressive to some people. It was number one on the list. It didn't crack 100K. But here's what we have to consider. So these sales were between April 29th and May 3rd. It sold, you know, as I said, 88,000. Some people are rounding it up to 90. Either way, around 90,000 copies. But that is a huge increase over how the game performed on Wii U. The original release in 2014, its opening week in Japan, sold just 35,000 copies. And to put this in bigger perspective, in Japan, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze sold through 65% of its initial shipment. Whereas on Wii U, it sold through just 35%. Now, we don't have performance figures in the U.S. yet, U.K., uh, other major territories. We will probably get U.K. numbers really, really soon, and you know, U.S. numbers will be here next month. But what I do know is that we have to really take this into consideration when we talk about Wii U games coming to Switch because they have been a massive success. And I know... As a Wii U owner myself, or a prior Wii U owner, I sold mine off to help pay for Switch. When I owned a Wii U, I understand that it is a little annoying to see so many Wii U ports. Not because I, we care that they're being ported. <laughs> I mean, come on. Who cares that they're being ported as long as we're getting a bunch of new content? But because they're being treated as major releases in lieu of seemingly new content. Now, last year... A little, a little bit of a misnomer. I know Breath of the Wild, some people, you know, consider it a port from from Wii U, blah, 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 whatever. So Breath of the Wild aside, you know, we still had, still had Odyssey. We still had Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Arms and Splatoon 2. Uh, so, like, we still had a bevy of, of new releases to go with something like a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and a Pokémon Tournament. But I want to glance at these sales figures because I think it's important to take these into consideration when we're talking about why Nintendo ports so many Wii U titles. So Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the second best-selling game on the entire platform. It has sold 9.22 million units just on Switch. And if you look at the Wii U numbers, it actually compares quite favorably. You see, Mario Kart 8 on Wii U sold just 8.42 million. So you can see why they brought Mario Kart 8, the deluxe version with the changed multiplayer, over to Switch. Because the audience for Switch is just hungry for games and much bigger. In the first fiscal year, you know, first fiscal year plus launch month, it sold 17.74 million units. We're talking about the total sales of Switch. Well, here's the thing. The total sales of, of Wii U are only at 13.5 million. So that was over four years. So there's already a bigger install base and a bigger audience for Switch. So it makes sense to bring over some of these Wii U exclusives. Now you might think, well, that's Mario Kart, right? Mario Kart always sells. All right, all right, fine. Let's look at another port from last year. Pokin Tournament Deluxe. It sold 1.16 million units so far. Guess how much it sold on Wii U? Exactly, or roughly, 1 million units. So it outsold Pokin Tournament on Wii U, although not as significantly as, you know, Mario Kart 8, but still, it's a higher figure. So... Now we have to sit back and think about 
this sale is not going on Tropical Freeze because it is not a million seller on Wii U. Currently, it did never cracked a million units on Wii U, which is a bit disheartening when you consider the sales of Donkey Kong Country Returns, which, while it was on, obviously, Nintendo's most popular home console of all time, and then re-released on 3DS, it did sell 6.5 million units. Now, I don't think Tropical Freeze is going to quite hit 6.5 because it is a port. However, it's going to be a million seller. I can almost inherently guarantee combined sales worldwide over the next six months is going to put it at over a million units, which it did not do on Wii U. So I, there, there is a caveat to this, obviously. Uh, the Bayonetta 1 and 2 sales, um, they weren't exactly the most impressive so far. However, Bayonetta 2 and Bayonetta 1 uh, didn't really sell that well on Wii U either, all things considered. Uh, still sell decently well. I suppose, for the install base and considering the audience for Bayonetta and, and the changeover. But uh, we know Bayonetta 3 is coming, so I think Bayonetta 3 is a better way to, to gauge things because I do think that Tropical Freeze's sales might have been less if there had been an announcement for another Donkey Kong Country game because uh, Wii U owners that might want to double dip might be more or less likely to do that knowing a new game is on the horizon. So I, I'm going to hold off on the Bayonetta 1 and 2 because it's in that unique situation, right? We don't know about a new Mario Kart coming. We don't know about a new Pokemon tournament coming. We don't know, but we do know about a new, you know, Bayonetta 1, 2, and then now 3. So it's a little bit different situation. But still, I think we have to... There's been a lot of talk about Switch being a port machine. And I feel like that's kind of missing the point. Uh, we know about a bunch of new games coming, so there, there's no denial that there's new games coming. Um, there's some older ports of current-gen games coming, like Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. We just had the Fractured Butthole come out rather recently, and that, that's from the third-party perspective. But there's a bunch of new games from Nintendo coming as well. What new games do we know about so far? We know there's a new Yoshi game coming. We know there's a new Pokemon game coming. There's a new Metroid game coming. A new Smash Bros. game coming. Uh, a new Fire Emblem game coming. And th those are just like the games that Nintendo has already told us they are making. There's a whole bunch of games. We have no idea what they're doing. And we're going to find out a lot at E3. But I don't think that Wii U ports should ever be considered a problem on Switch. Even if for a large period of time, it feels like the most significant releases are Wii U ports. Because we are now past the point where we can argue that a majority of the Switch's audience is Wii U owners. I think we the Wii U, you know, with its 13.5 and Switch likely over 20 million at this point, not every Wii U owner owns a Switch yet, right? But Switch has exceeded Wii U sales, meaning that probably at least half of the audience, if not more, for Switch never owned a Wii U. So for them... These are brand new games. And so we can we can complain and, and scream from the mountaintop about, you know, port machine, port machine, port machine. But for Switch owners, it feels like they're just getting cascaded with new games. You know, for all the praise we gave for Nintendo's lineup last year, this year's lineup might have been just as good for some. Because, you know, think about it, paying out of one and two. Well, paying out of two would be a new game for many, you know, Switch owners. Uh, you know, Kirby Star Allies. There's a lot of people that went and bought that. We know that's a million seller. 1.26, I think, was the current figure for launch month. It, we know that Nintendo is you know, talking about Tropical Freeze. Hyrule Warriors coming out later this month. That's going to be a brand new title for a lot of people. Heck, speaking of Hyrule Warriors, I even forgot to mention Fire Emblem Warriors, which was a brand new Switch game that came out last year. The, we have to remember that just because some of us owned a Wii U, just because some of us enjoyed that content on Wii U, because Wii U has a bad reputation, and I'm not going to say it doesn't deserve the reputation, but what I will say is just because the Wii U as a system was not appealing to third parties for very long, nor was it appealing to just Nintendo fans, that doesn't mean there weren't good games. All of these Wii U ports so far have been the best of the best of the Wii U library. Heck, Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker's coming over with new, you know, Mario Odyssey content. Like, that's huge because Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is very, very good. And I hope that it signifies we're going to see, you know, Super Mario 3D World and stuff come over because it's a very, very good game. 
also happens to have Captain Toad in it. So I feel like um, if you think the Switch is nothing but a port machine, I don't blame you if you are coming from the Wii U perspective. But I do think we need to be fair to Nintendo and realize, one, they're a business, so they're a for-profit company that cares about money. And we don't like to, to think about that as consumers. We don't think, no, they care about us as, as consumers. They want to make the games we want to buy. Blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, that's great because they want they want to make money. But we also have to remember that so many Switch owners, these are new games. They might they might be vaguely aware, especially if they are Nintendo fans, that they were on a prior system. But whatever, don't you go in Tropical Freeze? And I'm I'm going to argue this to this day. Is worth sixty dollars. It's worth sixty dollars today. But what makes people feel like it's not is it's $20 on Wii U. Well, sure, because it didn't sell well on Wii U. It didn't even crack a million units on Wii U when the prior game sold 6.5. So to not even crack a million when I think objectively that, or maybe I shouldn't say objectively, subjectively, the Tropical Freeze is better than Country Returns. Um, It's... It's one of those things where it was massively offended by the platform it was on. It's on Switch. I I bought Tropical Freeze, as ironic as that might be, because I did say, for Wii U owners, Tropical Freeze is overpriced on Switch. For brand new Switch owners that didn't own Wii U, Tropical Freeze should be $60. And that might be a controversial statement. Another controversial statement this week. But that's because the games will be priced where the market can bear it. And for all these Switch owners, then these games are brand new for $60 is well worth the experience. If it, Think about this. If you owned a Wii U and you bought Tropical Freeze, you bought Hyrule Warriors, you bought Treasure Tracker, all of a sudden you bought those games at the prices they were at on Wii U. Back then, did you say those games were worth it? I think most of us that did buy them said very much so Hyrule Warriors were worth the price of admission with the DLC on top. Like, very much so was Mario Kart 8 worth the price of admission. Very much so was Tropical Freeze worth the price. But now, because it's on a new platform, suddenly it's not worth that price anymore for people who have never, ever played those games. I'm sorry. Did the quality of those games get worse over the past five years? I think not. So, that's where I'm going to leave things today. Don't get on Tropical Freeze. Selling well in Japan. Sure, it's selling well everywhere. Um, I expect it fully to be over a million units when it's all said and done. I don't know if we'll hit two or three. Uh, we'll see how the evergreen sales for Nintendo games kind of go on Switch since it happens to be a hit platform that should sell over 30 million units LTD by the end of this current fiscal year. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Rumble Jets from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Nah.